So a view on that how you can validate and synthesize data before it get into your database, then this tutorial here is for you. In this tutorial, we look at how we can validate and synthesize data before it get into the, the into our database, and we'll be you we'll be using Node.js, Express, and TypeScript. Um, I will show you how you can make your application more secure when you are you are expecting data from users or you are expecting any data from front end. So if you are already here and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel, like this video. And let's get into this tutorial. So here I have already created a, this blank application here and I want to initialize Node.js application here and because we'll be using TypeScript we first of all initiate the TypeScript conf we just generate a, a TypeScript config file because it will help us to configure on how we want our TypeScript engine to work. So first of all I have these terminals here these two terminals here so this one I'll just generate with this uh, TypeScript TS config file and what to do that you just say TS and then dash dash init and it should generate uh, that TS config for us. So this one is the config file and here we can do those configurations. Don't worry, we only need to configure very small things. So first of all, I want to tell it where it should where we are coding so we are coding the typescript here in SRA, uh, src folder and then you need to uncomment this module resolution and another thing that you should do you just come here and specify where typescript file or sub, uh, typescript code would be generated and you generate it at at this folder so we will just create those folders here so first of all let me create that dist here where it will uh, our con our js js code will be generated and now again another thing that i want is where we'll be coding and we'll be coding at src so let us now initialize the code node.js application and to initialize you need to just type npm here in this terminal you need to type npm and then init and to accept everything or every option, let me type dash y and then enter. So after some time, we see this package.json file generated here. So you have this package.json and now this file here will help us to, to install some packages. So first of all, all the packages that we want, we just uh, install them. So we just say npm and then install first of all we need express because we'll be using express another thing we need uh let me install even if i don't know if you use it dot env and then cause just uh those i think they are okay so now let us install this so when you are gen uh before it installs everything now let me add here a dot index file so just a dot index ts just like that and now here is where we start coding our application and our server so let's see if it has generated already so first of all let me start watching it using the typescript and as it compiles because this command here tsc dash w we look at our code uh, for any changes and it, it will compile that TypeScript code to JavaScript. So let me uh, enter and you see it is start uh, it is start watching and when it is start watching now we see that we have created index.js here and it has generated this index.js here and that is the work of this watching here the TypeScript here because we are using TypeScript and to use uh, this watching and compiling you need to just type tsw tsc dash w and this is w is for watching it will watch for any changes and then it will compile our code and then give the and then com compile it and generate the javascript code here you can see already it has generated and we haven't uh, started coding so i i think now the we have already installed the packages 
and to confirm that you can come here to package package this one and you can see the packages that we have installed and the one that we'll be using so we start come here first of all we come here and the first thing that i want to add to import is express and we import express from express express here so that uh, add express there like that and you see there is an error and this is because we, TypeScript want us to add types, so we just hover over it. You can see this command, copy, copy it, and then come into your terminal here. And then what you need to do is just to, copy, to paste it, and then let uh, let it install those types. It's a very small package for the types of TypeScript, so let it uh, install. And again, another thing that we need is to import calls and this one will come from calls and calls will help us to just uh, make requests from any other endpoint uh, url or origin so let me see if it has installed so it is not uh, it has not completed so what we do is just start initializing uh, our app and our app will be from express here so just like that and then you see there's another error you just hover over it in uh, type scripts require you to install these types that's why you see there's an error and then when you hover over it it give you more information on what you should do so now let me install these types too for the course so let it install and now we have initialized here up uh, up uh, our app here so now we can use this app and we can do a couple of things like reason and we want to design for another we need to uh, we need to design for maybe our server our, our from one one port in our uh, in our computer and this one will specify this port here it's not necessary you give it 3000 you can give it any port from 0 to 65355 i guess so another thing that we can do to hide this port that our server is running on, let me create .env file. So what we do, just create here, just come here and create a file, name it .env. And now what we do in order to access, dot, uh, to access this .env, just open here and we can import this .env. So import dot env from and this one we want to import it from dot env just like that and then uh, from here we can just start using this and the first thing that we can do is that we can call we can use this middleware and to use mid uh, this middleware called app dot use just need to say app dot use and then we can say things like cause here another thing that we can do is is uh, coding dot env dot env and then dot env and then config just like that and it should be okay now so now what we need to do we can just come here and spe and specify the port that we want to run remember this dot env we don't push it to github so this is we need to specify like we can give this port uh, a port of let me say 5000 and now to come, we can come here inside and then before we start our port, our server here you can say const and then app or port and we can give it a process you can say process to access that dot env process dot env dot port because we have called it port here just like that and now we can uh, access it here you can say now port here so now from here we can console log console log and we can use this template here so we can see server server is running on port and then we'll access the value for our port so we just add 
using that dollar sign and curry braces and then type port that variable here so now we can run it and see how it looks like right? so remember we have this here the our compilation here in our terminal and you can see there's an error the, there are errors that we it found here so what uh, we need to look at is how where the errors occurred so let me first of all we done it because i think this error that uh, broke it so let me clear first of all and then start again and see if there's those errors that it printed earlier so let's see so you see there's a uh, found zero errors and now you can see the code that has been generated but this one we don't uh, we don't care even if it looks scary here so we just need to just work on this ts file here so another thing now we need to run we need to run this um for our server so remember we are not running typescript code we are running javascript code so we just do i have already installed node mon in my global so if you don't have node mon you can just uh, install it just the way i show you like maybe this npm and then and then node mon but for me i have installed it on global so i don't need to install it here in this application so we just run using this node mon and we run the code that is in list like that and then let us see our server running so you can see our server is running on port 5000 and it is getting that 5000 port from here so another thing that i want to show you is the best practices best practices and folder structures in node.js how you can structure your folder in a very nice manner and what uh first of all the first thing that you need to adopt is MVC conventional way of programming and MVC stand for model view control and I'll show you here you can start by routes here and another thing you can add a controller control controllers let me keep it as small letters controllers and you, here in our routes now we specify our routes and here above uh, here in our controllers we just do the business logic or the logic of our coding so now here we can add helpers uh, here so we can add helpers and here in helpers we just include those functions that will be reusable like maybe say midwares and mid uh, to protect our roots things that you know you start a, you, a function that you use most of the time in your code so another thing that you should add here is a fol folder called db and this db folder will help us to to document our to document our database here if you are using something like stop procedures in sql or relational databases you should include here because if you are working in a team of developers then they need to see how you, are, you have structured that database for the work to be easier. Also for you, you, you can go here when you are confused. You can look at how you structured your database. If there is an error, you can correct it very, very easy because you can see already the structure that you used for that database. So another thing is that you should add is config. So you can see this config there. This config this is where you add a file that will help to connect with your database those options that you need maybe you need a pool of connection you should add that config.ts file there so for now we will just use these helpers because we need to add that um, function that we'll be using to just uh, to just uh, validate our input and this route here and controllers those are the things that we need for now so first of all, you know, when you are trying to start, you must, uh, you should start at controllers. And for now, what we need here, we just come here in my controller and add, maybe say we need to validate the data that is coming from the user when the user is registering. So we just create that here. We just say sign up. Sign up. We need 
we are assuming that we need to validate the data that is uh, for signing up that is coming from our front end. So we just add sign up .ts and then something like yes or sign in ts. So sign in sign in .ts as just like that and to sign up to sign up uh, we create here something so even we can use only one here we can let me delete this we can use only one because it is a logic for login and signing up and we've called it user so let me remove them and then again now what we can do we can create a one file here and we'll call it user user.ts and now from here we can create those two functions so the first function we export it by default export const and then we call it sign sign up so we can add this one here as a as a function and it should be a row uh, narrow function so first thing that you need to do now is to require request and response because we need those so on this request and uh, this request and response will come it be coming from our from our express so first thing we need to give them type types because in in typescript you need to add these uh, types so first of all is the request we give a uh, type of request and remember this type uh, request comes from this express here so just like that and again another thing that we need to add is response and this response here it comes from we give it a type of response and this type of response comes from express make sure you have uh, you have selected this response that is coming from express make sure you're importing this request here from uh, from express and response from uh, express so another function that we need here is ex the export export const and then sign in because we need the other function to be for signing and we give it a uh, this other function here and it will require this request here as usual so request and this is from we give it a type of request can see it there and then response and this one will come from response yeah so that's all and again now we need to add those routes here so actually this is uh, we create a that route for user again so user dot ts or to just make a little of difference let's give this a uh, small letters so now from here we need to import route because we need to specify the root so root or router that is coming from express express just like that and then now to initialize this route we should say const router and uh, this one we call this function called router and now again now first thing we need to export it before I forget we export default here and then router just like that and this will help us to use this router in other folders and I will just show you so we just say router dot post because we need to post the data that will be for registering and signing in so dot post and then here we give a just a slash user uh, just a root of user and again here we just call now a function for signing in so let me call the um, for signing in first of all and another thing now we need to do is to call another function or another root for signing up so now here we give another root so let's say user and to just differentiate we call this sign up or signing in sign in and now this one will give it a function of sign in sign in this one so here above we can create a root for signing in so just or sign up just like that and again 
now here we need to create a file called index this will help us to uh, to make our code reusable because we don't create we don't want to create every root in our app our index that is that is our root here so we don't want to import every root here so that's why we are creating this index.ts but you will see how you use it so we just say import and we can import from now uh, here from our user.ts as simple as that and what we need to import is we can call it user, user root here here just like that and this uh, user root here remember we are exporting by default here so this router is the one that we are getting here because we are importing from user root and we are exporting here by default so another thing i want to add here now this folder here or this file here index.ts inside tools is only for importing and exporting so so we just export and we'll be exporting this uh, user root just like that and then now we just now import from here because we we didn't uh, we don't want to make our code um very very uh, dirty or we don't want to repeat uh, the same thing importing here because it will be, uh, it will confuse you very very easy so now we can import as one root uh, here we can say import now import uh, here we can call it also user root from uh, now from dot roots here and index or we can call it from index or oh, oh okay we should add uh, this one here and actually we can remove this we should import it uh, here user root just just like that and again now if we wanted another root now we can add it here if we had another root here parcels like we need to add like maybe you want this application is for parcels or courier services and you need to create a root for parcels you just add here import it and export so that in our index here it will have a dry code and you can see like for this uh for to import this root you don't even need to add here dot index or slash index it will just import it uh, just like that so and those are some of the best practices that you can use in node.js so now the other thing is to specify the endpoint and for now our endpoint we can add it here so we can say app.use and now we can create a root of api and now we can give it this user user root here and we can even we can even move these roots here yeah mm, and now we can add them or we can add them this one here we can remove them here and just add them in here in our endpoint or our root file here so just like that so when you're making any request it will hit and hit this endpoint slash api slash user then it will just come here and look for this route it will search for this route this route is is it will come here and look and see it is in this user route here uh, come here and see which route to specify maybe it is sign up or it is signing after that now it will call this function that is here in our logic controller is here which are our logic so we can start using the uh, now application here so before that i want us to now test it first of all and to test it i just want us to save first of all here so we just come here and we need to like console log something so that we see if our application is working so console log and then we can say something like you heated you you signed in or signing up successfully successfully and here also you can copy and paste it here 
and we can see sign in successfully. So I just want us to I need us to use our postman our postman application here to hit our endpoint. So I'm, let me start this uh, postman application. So we use it to test our backend when we don't have front end or oh, it's a good application. We should install it and start practicing using it. So now we have these two routes here. So it has already started. I think um, it has not loaded successfully. So let me, let me close these ones. Don't want them. And another thing that I forgot is that you should add here. Here you should add uh, get ignore dot get ignore ignore here and here you should specify things that you don't want to push to your github and things that you don't need uh, include uh, things like dot env because it may have your secrets keys and things that you don't want it to be pub things that you don't want to be public and you can add node modules because these are folders that somebody will, will be or when you are cloning your uh, when you are cloning your application can be you can generate them because you have this JSON package and it shows uh, it specifies the packages that are required to run this application. So you can clone and then do something like npm npm and then install and it will install these packages for you because this module here this node modules here include every every package how it is it is a, a folders and a folders and packages are stored uh, are being stored here so now i think now our postman is okay so let me try and start um, testing it here so first of all i'll just move this or I just create another another request you can uh, add another request here so let me add a request and a, a request here so let, let us specify our endpoint here so first of all let me take this so because it is uh, in our local host and here it should be http it is not https because if you use https it won't work and again here we are using port 5000 and we need to hit on user and then sign in sign in or sign up any of those and remember it is a post so we need to post some data or to send some data so come here select this body then row and now we need to use JSON here. So we need to use JSON here. And uh, now if we want to send the data uh, JSON, in order for Express to understand which uh, JSON data, we need to come here in your index. And in your index here, in our entry, entry file in our application, and you need to add uh, or you need to get this uh, json so you just say app.use and then you need json and this json will come from express so specify from json and then it's okay now it will now understand those data that will be coming from our front end or any other place uh, that is in json form format so let me save you can see it has been imported here from my express now the other thing that need now we can now start uh, testing our application so let me see first of all if it is running it's running as you can see here so and our ts i'm hoping it is running ts uh, this uh, this uh, command here for compiling so now we need to just test so let us send or uh, because we don't have data so let me first of all add data here so we can say something like this one is email we are sending email and this email here we can call it maybe john john doe at gmail 
www.johndoe.com and what the password for John Doe you can give uh, John Doe a password a password called John Doe John Doe just like that and this one should have be inside this quotation just like that and now that's okay so first of all let's see if it has already printed as you can see it had already printed so I just want us to clear first of all and then to start our application. So when we are trying to, uh, to, uh, to get into this endpoint signing user slash signing in, when you, when you send this data and you hit that endpoint, you can see here we have this uh, signing in successfully. So it is printing this data or this console log here that we specified it should I, it should print whenever we hit this endpoint or this uh, we have done this logic here so now let me stop this you see even it is hung uh, descending the request because is now uh, there is nothing that we are doing in that out on that business logic controller so let me let me first of all uh, let me first of all Stop it and then we can try for signing up and let me send this so you can see here we have now console log sign up successfully so what you can do now to access this data to access this data you can you can add here something like you want to get this data from our request body so what you do you just add here this card braces and said const and we want to accept email and password password from request.body request.body yeah and now we can print this uh this email and password so we can print the email and maybe password and see if we can get them because the request that will be uh, that is coming will come from our request.body so let me first of all try again uh, let me send the request I think I have added it yeah, it's ok so when we are sending this request here you should see the data being printed here and you can see our email and password here so now any request or this data here you can even send nothing you can even send something like an empty string just like that and it will just uh it will just print for us or it will be okay and if it is in our database you see for now it is printing only email and then nothing because we have given a password of an uh, empty string but that is very insecure if we are sending this data to a database our database at this point will require you we'll get this input that is empty and this is not the way to go so now i want now to show you how to validate and to validate data we can use a package that is called joy and we can come here and try and maybe look at how joy works or a package this package here as you can see here I had already visited it, uh, visited it. So you can see the most powerful Joy is the most powerful schema description language and data validation for JavaScript. I want you guys to come here and read more about it and how you can validate more other things. It's not only the user data for signing in and uh, and signing up. You can validate anything. And so the first thing that you need to do is to create a schema. We need to create a schema because it is validate using a schema. So in our helpers here, remember I told you here we need to add a function that we we will use mostly in this application. So let's add that uh, user validation file or function here, and it is ts. So now what we we'll do here now we just create those schemas. For so first of all, before I forget. We should import this here. We should install this Joey. So let me 
I'm here and then now let me stop it first of all and let me paste this and then paste has installed it. I think it's a very small package so it should be installed very very fast. So you can see it is it has already installed now I can clear here and then we start our application. So as simple as that. So here we need to import that joy. So joy from joy and I don't know if it will require types. So joy so it, it doesn't require types so it's okay so from here now we can start creating this uh, validation schema so first of all we create a schema for registering so we just say export cons in form of function and we call this register or signing up schema just like that and schema let me call it schema and again what you need to do now you can say joy dot object and this is a function that requires an object so now things that we require here for signing up you can add them here you can add uh, those input or those data that you require when you are registering so first of all we need email in our case here so we just say email and then you can say joy and because it will be a string you can Call it, uh, we can add a string there, uh, call that function, and then from there we can say dot required. You can see this required here, or we can start by email here, call that function, and that will check if our email is valid. So, and then we look if it exists, and then you can see if it is required. Just like that, you can do most things here. So that's uh, what you can do there. And then another thing that you should add, uh, we should add in our case here, is our password. And password, you can check several things. It is also a string, so you should come here and add string because you can look for many other things. So let me add uh, that one. Let me move this. And then Joey dot you can see all things that you can validate numbers arrays everything dates even if uh, even in dates number object option everything that you can use here so now uh, so now we need to add string first of all we call this string here it will check uh, it, if it is a string and then if it is a we will say that it is required so, so, uh, like that and then we can specify the minimum length that is and we can say in our scenario we need our password to be uh, have a minimum of eight characters so as simple as that we me remove that and again now here down we can just copy and paste this one because you remember we are have to validate to that is uh, for login and registering so let me call this login here and even we can use only one for registering but i'll just use two and this uh, we can use one because it, it only validate email and password at our, in our case here so we need to validate now this uh, registering information all input and this login input here so that's all so now let's go back at our controllers here and the first thing that we need to do when we get the data is now to validate this data actually we should now remove that and now to to validate we need to call that uh, register schema so we just say register schema here and then we will give it request dot body before every anything else just uh, add that and because when we are validating we need uh, we will give it will give us two values and these values uh, first thing we need here is or the first thing that we get here is error 
error all data so first thing if your data if your data has uh, if the data validation has failed it will uh, it will output error or if the data has uh, has been validated successfully it will have this data you just console it to console log it to see what uh, will happen and to see what uh, what this data is so we can just see here so what is the problem it's not callable so so this is uh forgot here we need to do schema dot validate you know we require to add this validate here just like that and then here they are unused or distracted element are unused so this one should be a value i guess yeah yeah it is value it's not data so now you can say if error so this means that our validation has has failed we can what we can do we can access or we can send this back to the user or somebody who has sent the input so we can see rest of status and and or rest of json rest of json and inside here now you can do error and this error here and say something something like uh, details this is coming from our schema and again we need to access the first element there because it will be an uh, an uh, array and then the thing that we should now access is message just like that and now our application will fail if it uh, validation is not correct and if it else what i do we can now console log we can console log now the bug this means that if the error if there is an error then it will send this information but we if we have and if we have this value it will, it will console log the same we'll do here so what i do i'll just copy paste this one here copy and paste down here and now here we need to use login schema so anytime uh anytime or anytime we are we need to import this uh this login schema here so we just say login schema and see it is here so add it there and then let us first of all format this code so whenever you want to validate your data you just come here add another schema and then use it because you already know what you are expecting from front end you can add it here you can add things like um maybe if you have a parcel um parcel application you need something like names maybe send an email receive an email something of the sort you can just come here and validate because you already know what you expect from front end and now we can we can try and uh, see how it will work or how it will work so first of all i will just a uh, console okay now it's okay let us save and then see how it will work so you can see for now let me start with the correct information so i'll just say john john do and one two three four so this email is valid and this password is valid since uh, you remember we are requiring uh, eight characters so this is one two three four five six i think it's okay so now we need to to uh, send the request let's see if our backend is running so we can send this information so we have sent the information and here you can see uh, we have validated and we have given this data this data is coming from our it is coming from our schema now yeah it, yeah it is coming from our schema here because this schema because yeah this is what we are console logging here 
So this value, you get it. Uh, okay, when you when you are validating the data that you are getting from input or from the front end, it will validate, and if there is an error, it will uh, it won't continue, and it, uh, the value it will just give you the value that you gave it. So I think you have understood there. So now we need to add something that is not valid according to our schema. And now we just shorten our password here. So let's see what will happen. So when you send, you can see the error. So you can see here password then must be at least eight characters. And this is one, this information here is coming from our from our schema. So it is validating our password and also email. You can add a correct password here, just like that, and then you can remove this at sign here and now let us see the validation how it works and you can see email must be a valid must be, uh, must be a valid email so that's how validation work and you can see we can use this in signing up and it will give us the same same error so this one helps you most of the time to uh, to validate and to synthesize the data that is uh, that you want to save them from that you want to save it in your database so the first of all the first thing that you should do when you are accepting the data from input from front end it is to validate first of all use this joy it's a very powerful package and then after that you can now proceed with, with uh, maybe the saving that data into your app uh, saving that data to your database and these are some of the things that I see they are omitted or they are overlooked in most tutorials in YouTube and I wanted to cover it just here. So now that's what I wanted to show you guys. Adopt these uh, folder structures here and I'm sure you it won't uh, fail you because I have used this one. I have gone to companies and have uh, coded with teams and this is the folder structure that is best that work best uh, for developers and the, and teams so it will make your uh, code organized and so try to adopt this mode of coding of uh, folder structure in node and you'll be a great developer so i will just push this code in my github and i will link the github link in the description so guys don't uh, so guys don't um, forget to subscribe like this video and i will see you in the next tutorial